the best single day we've ever had in, in an annual conference, and this, is, this day is uh, going to be equally great. Uh, our, our second general session is always devoted to our great drivers that we honor every year. We're so pleased to, uh, to be able to do that. I'd like to recognize uh, our sponsors. Uh, could you give a round of applause to Best Pass and Isaac for the And also our Driver Hall of Fame VIP sponsor, CPC Logistics. CPC has been doing this for many, many years. Let's give them a great round of applause. And now our Driver Hall of Fame luncheon sponsors. How about that great lunch? CPC Logistics, Street Olay, Fleet in America, and Triple Transportation. Let's give those sponsors. Okay, so now we're going to begin our Driver Hall of Fame induction ceremony and the Master of Ceremonies. Uh, is, uh, it's a clear year. Is uh, Tom Moore, Executive Vice President of NPC. Tom? Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Tom. I'm so excited to be here. This is the favorite thing that I get to do out of many favorite things that I get to do in the course of my life and my career. And I just want to uh, welcome you all to this session. Uh, I would welcome, uh, I'd like to thank our sponsor, International Truck. And uh, Bob Mann, if you're in the audience, wherever you are, come on up to the stage, please. Uh, Bob is a generous sponsor. Without his support, we could not make this program work. And I'd also like to welcome our chair, board chair, Chuck Amon, uh, to the stage to help with the presentation of the awards. Uh, let me go back a second. What I'd like to do is just do a quick overview of this year's class, which is an exceptional class. Uh, we gathered in this room, and the four people you're about ready to be introduced to, 17 uh, I'm sorry, 172 years of service to this industry, 13.2 million miles without a chargeable accident, moving violation, or injury. That represents, just to put that number in perspective, if these folks started when they did, and they're all in their 60s and one in their 70s, uh, but if, uh, if, if they started all together, that would have been 27 round trips to the moon, okay? That's about five, or another perspective, 530 revolutions around this world without an accident or without a moving violation. I think that's pretty special. And And the yeah. four men you're about to meet represent absolutely the best of the best. They're the cream of the crop. They're the pinnacle of excellence in this industry. They're, they're the people that everybody aspires to be like. And we'd like to thank them for their years of service, their dedication, their focus, their extreme sense of care, their honesty, their embodiment of the golden rule. They live it every day. And, uh, and, and this is a real tribute to a job well done for them. Uh, I, I humbly hope that over the next few minutes that I'm able to capture in some small way the essence of what makes each one of the four of these individuals tick. Uh, it, it, I, I'd like to pay them the respect, I mean, how do you reduce a lifetime of service into five or six minutes? That's the challenge. And uh, so bear with me, and I hope you get a better sense to see what makes them tick. But understand that each one of these four men, they have, while they come from different parts of our industry, different areas of our country, they are joined because of their love for, the, for their family, uh, they're united in their service to their customers and to the companies that employ them. They're all supported by great companies and by great family lives back home. In short, these are four stories of individuals that make our industry proud and they make America great. Next up, I'd like to welcome to the stage Billy Steele. You all would come up, please. Billy has been a professional truck driver uh, 
for 42 years, and in that time he's racked up 3.8 million miles, all without a chargeable accident or moving violation. He is currently in his 18th year of service with Unified, where he has driven 1.1 million miles hauling textiles and general commodities. How did, how did Billy do it? Pay attention to what you're doing. And also, you gotta keep on your eye on what everybody else is doing too. You can't, you can't have tunnel vision and just watch what's in front of you. You gotta get the whole picture. So that's how he does it, but his commitment runs a lot deeper than that. There's an emotional connection you'll find with Billy. I, I enjoy my family life. I know that that's, that's my main priority is to get back home safe and to make sure everybody else around me does the same. I mean, to me, that would be the, that would be the ultimate is me cause somebody to get hurt. And, you know, I, I don't know that would really make a big difference if that happened. You know, it's my fault. I just don't think I could. I don't think I could stomach it, I guess. He knows what he's talking about in that case because it was while he was driving, and I'm jumping ahead in his story a little bit, but while he was driving for Golden State in 1998 and 1989, Billy almost lost his life when he was T-boned by a Class 8 truck in his own personal car. It was a, a dark and rainy night, and he was sitting at a stop sign and in his personal car. And we actually drove right past the scene of that accident, which kind of gave me the chills. And uh, he ended up uh, being T-boned, as I said, by the, the Class 8 tractor. And uh, he broke his hip and left arm, and he was in traction for 58 days and uh, disability for a couple of years and uh, as he rehabbed. And he said that that affected the way I drive to this day. You know, he knows how much damage a big rig can cause and how quickly it can happen. So, uh, but I jumped ahead a little bit. Let's, let's take you back to Madison, North Carolina, just about uh, 45 minutes north of Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, a small town where, uh, where he was born and raised. And he went to work for Fuzzy's Barbecue uh, back in uh, when he was 14 years old. He played high school sports, uh, all the, you know, football, baseball, and basketball. And at, uh, after he got out of high school, he kept playing competitive softball. And Unify actually has a pretty competitive softball uh, league, or it did at one time. When he graduated, he went to work for one of the esteemed names in the private fleet field, and that was Burlington Industries. It was one of the, uh, the one of the companies that really launched the private fleet uh, business model that many of us are still incorporating in our practices today. Uh, his father worked there as a supervisor and Billy started driving a forklift in the warehouse. He started his driving career in 1977 with Burlington operating straight trucks and delivering product to plants. After about 14 years and stints with a couple of different fleets, Billy landed a coveted job at Unify and he's been with Unify two times now. The first time for 12 years and he had to leave the company uh, when the company's business went downhill and they were forced to make layoffs. Uh, he didn't take that personally. Uh, and you'll find Billy doesn't let much get under his skin at all. Uh, he understood the, long, the bigger term and the longer picture and he knew that he would be back. But in the meantime, he worked for about six different places for the next 10 years, never finding a home. And he finally got the chance to come back to Unify just about eight years ago. He works about 50 hours a week driving three to 400 miles per day in the company's plants in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. Uh, what he likes about driving, he likes the freedom of driving. Nobody's looking over his shoulder. You're responsible for making your own decisions. The money is not terrible, and the work, he says, is not that hard. But let's hear him talk. Oh, just the freedom of being out there on your own, making your own decisions. Uh, and most of the places that we go, people are happy, you know, they, they're, they're glad you're there. You know, they're looking for whatever product you got. And that, that makes a difference when, when they have you back, glad to see you when you get there. So you can find, you can see his positive attitude and along with his defensive driving, it helps to keep him a safe driver. He served for 17 years uh, 
or he earned 17 Unified Safe Driving Awards and was named the 2019 Driver of the Month by the North Carolina Trucking Association. Um, how does he do it? Uh, he actually, he tells me, you know, he has to strive to be a safe driver throughout his career. The goal is to be the safest driver that he can be, and he always has a good attitude and one that uh, one of the essential parts of being a safe driver. So I condensed his rules of the road into the following uh, five elements. Stay alert to what's happening around you. Watch what you're doing and what other drivers are doing. Don't get in a hurry. Leave yourself an out and get the whole picture. Again, you can see some of the same rules apply over and over. Uh, but the, you can apply the rules, it's hard to apply the attitude. Uh, the level of focus requires starting a shift by getting as much rest and communicating well with others to get as much information about uh, road conditions, traffic conditions, uh, and, and the load condition itself. Where are you going? What door you're going into? Uh, we, we checked uh, to find out if there were any accidents on the way. Uh, we actually ran, when we were running, in the opposite lane, we ran across a, an accident that had stopped down traffic on I-40 on the way back, and we checked to make sure that that was still a, a good path on the way back, whether the accident had cleared. He maintains his commitment by completing defensive driver training and mitigation systems training. He also serves on the safety review committee and has served as a driver training trainer. I try to lead by example, he told me, to help them understand how important it is to maintain proper following distance. I also want them to know that you never want to get in a hurry. And there's one more thing he tries to talk to them about. I tell them, whatever you do, don't forget that trailer back there. That's the absolute number one thing, and take your time. Don't get, you don't get in a hurry. It's been my experience, you get in a hurry, something's gonna happen. So you can see, uh, Billy gets emotional, uh, and he understands the emotional pull that an accident can have on a truck driver, and his goal is to make sure everyone gets home safe, everybody on the road. His motto is live and let live, be safe and happy. He enjoys his family life, and we'll get into his family life here in a second, uh, and that's his main priority, to make sure he makes it back home. Another way he stays fresh is he competes in the North Carolina Truck Driving Championships, which he's done uh, four times and come in as high as uh, fourth one year uh, and he's also competed 17 straight years at the Unified Truck Driving Championships. So I mentioned family, uh, speaking uh, of which he, he and his wife Joyce are going to be celebrating their uh, 41st anniversary, correct? 41 years in 18 days. So uh, let's give them a round of applause for that. And I'm going to tell you, they, uh, I asked him how they met, and he said, we met over a foosball table. So you can win many ways at a foosball table, okay? <laughs> But right there in Mass, and she works, uh, and, and she may be everybody's best friend by the end of this session. She works at a little company called Piedmont Distillers, and if you want some good moonshine, not that I've had any, <laughs> but I want some. <laughs> so I'll come visit you, I promise you. So, um, and uh, they, together, uh, they have one daughter, pictured here, Kristen, who's a respiratory therapist, and two granddaughters, pictured here, both uh, Ashlyn and uh, McKinley. And when he's not driving, there's Billy, kind of relaxing. Uh, he served for 12 years in the Madison Fire Department, fundraising, uh, and, and also does a lot of fundraising around the community. He has a couple dogs, and I asked him about them. Uh, they, they, they consume a lot of his time. And I asked him what kind of dogs, and he said, one's black and one's brown. <laughs> <laughs> but there he is here with the Patch and Coco, and uh, he loves spending time. They love to travel together. Here they are helicoptering at Ocean Isle, North Carolina. They just got back from Key West. I did take the picture out of him with a statue of Marilyn Monroe because it was not necessarily appropriate. Um, <laughs> especially when you're celebrating the number of years they are together. And I, I think his favorite motto is his shirt, Poppy, since 2010. So, Billy, thanks so much. I want you to stay on stage, Joyce, if you could exit, and I can ask all my drivers to come back up. <laughs>